I don't want to again, biology and medicine videos. Please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group for the latest videos. Please visit Facebook at Vanda Hasuriga. Please like, and here you can also ask questions, answer questions, and post some interesting things, including artworks would be greatly appreciated, or send them to me. And you can also change the quality settings to the highest one for better graphics. Now, in the last video, we learned how the lymphoid precursor cell, which we, uh, which would become a T cell, so we just call it a T cell precursor, enters the thymus. Um, and this T cell precursor expresses no CD8 or CD4 co-receptor, uh, but through T cell development in the thymus, it will become a naive T cell expressing both CD4 and CD8, and then it will become either a naive T cell only expressing CD8 or a naive T cell only expressing CD4 co-receptor. And then from the thymus, these naive T cells, the CD4 and CD8 naive T cells, will go and travel through the bloodstream into the peripheral lymphoid organs, such as the lymph node, and they are situated in the paracortex. And in the lymph node, we also have the germinal center where the B cell has, my, has migrated to. And then we have the afferent vessels, which bring uh, certain cells in, into the lymph nodes as well. And we have the efferent uh, vessels, which brings activated um, leukocytes out of the lymph node, typically. Now in this video, we are part four, I think. We are going to learn about the innate immune system. So what happens during a, um, an invasion of a pathogen in a tissue? So what happens, for example, if a nail or some object uh, penetrates the skin or tissue somewhere and it brings in pathogens? Our tissues will become possibly inflamed during a pathogen invasion. So what would typically happen is that chemical signals will, of course, recruit more leukocytes to basically apprehend the invading pathogen, stopping it. And then we also have the complement proteins, which play a critical role in the innate immunity, making making it easier, making the, it easier for the leukocytes to destroy the pathogens, basically. So we have uh, more more leukocytes going into the infiltrated area, typically neutrophils, because neutrophils are very fast acting. So again, in case of inflammation uh, due to the invasion of the pathogen, more leukocytes are recruited into the dam uh, damaged or infiltrated area. What's important to know is that if a pathogen has infiltrated the body, it can cause an infection, of course, and uh, obviously an inflammation. And what the innate immunity is role is, is to basically uh, stop the pathogen in its track. But if it's a first exposure to the pathogen, it's a bit difficult for the innate immunity to destroy it. And so the innate immunity's role in this case is to halt it uh, and wait for the pathogen to be recognized by the adaptive immune cells, the B and T cells. But how does this happen? Well, the dendritic cells have play a critical role in that it will become activated once it, uh, once it uh, basically phagocytizes the antigen of the pathogen, and then it brings the antigen of the pathogen, travels to the lymph nodes with the antigen of the pathogen, and presents it to the T and B cells, so the T and B cells can become activated. And so now the adaptive immune response uh, can also now uh, recognize the pathogen and so sort of try to destroy it together with the innate immune cells. So let's go back to the big immunology map now and let's uh, look at it in a bit more detail, what happens when the tissue gets infected and becomes infiltrated by a pathogen. So in the last video, we learned how the naive T cells, the CD4 and CD8 naive T cells, enter the paracortex of the lymph node through the high endothelial venule and how the immature B cells as well enter the cortex of the lymph node through this high uh, endothelial venule. And remember that these lymphocytes, they are not active yet because there is no pathogen invasion yet. So now let's go back to the tissue, uh, this healthy tissue, and see what would happen if, for example, a nail has penetrated this particular tissue. It can be beneath our skin, for example. And this nail that penetrates tissue can possibly bring in some form of pathogen. And this green here I represent as pathogen. And it can be, for example, a bacteria. This pathogen would be recognized by the innate immune cells because it expresses what's called PAMPs. And I've made a video on PAMPs. If you want to watch it, I'll provide the link right now. Now, these these um, 
these immune cells, and the immune cells will recognize the PAMPs of this pathogen. And for example, the mast cell would recognize this and will start um, secreting histamine as an inflammatory response or as a uh, pathogen invading response. Histamine, what will it cause? It will cause vasodilation and increase the vascular permeability of the blood vessels. And at this, uh, similarly, uh, the tissue macrophage, which also recognizes these PAMPs, will start secreting cytokines, which would attract more leukocytes or telling the le more leukocytes to come into this infiltrated area. And so histamine, together with the cytokines secreted by many of the innate immune cells, will attract and enable the circulating leukocytes to enter the infiltrated area. Typically, a neutrophil, which are the fast-acting cells. And so they travel, they circulate through the body and, and, and enter the infiltrated uh, area the quickest and begins phagocytizing um, these, these uh, pathogens. So the two important cells uh, which will initiate the innate immune response are essentially the macrophages uh, as well as the neutrophil. And the macrophages and neutrophil will engulf the pathogen in a process known as phagocytosis. Now, the complement proteins here will also enter this tissue, and the complement proteins um, help destroy the pathogen and also uh, stimulate phagocytosis. So it stimulates destruction and phagocytosis of the pathogen. And how does it do this? Well, I made a video on the complement protein as well. You can click on the link now and watch it. Now, what is phagocytosis? The neutrophil and the macrophage uh, does this. Phagocytosis, let's have a closer look at the tissue macrophage phagocytizing a pathogen because a tissue macrophage plays a critical role in that once it phagocytizes a pathogen, it will secrete cytokines to recruit more immune cells. So what happens? 